I am a meteorologist. I love the weather. Anybody who knows me knows that's 100% true. But I think weather forecasts can be more useful, you know, for things like skiing powder, perhaps, but also for serious things like saving lives. And here's an unfortunate story. Earlier this year, 2011, in August, a wind gust blew down the stage at the Indiana State Fair. Five people died, 40 were injured. And the governor afterwards said that this was a fluke wind gust. Actually, that's not entirely true. The wind gust was very well forecast 20 minutes before it actually came through. However, it was not well communicated to the people at the Indiana State Fair that could take action. And this brings up the biggest problem we have in weather forecasting today. There is a gap in knowledge between what I know as the weather guy and what you hear. And let's face it, does anybody really know what a 28% chance of rain actually means? I, I have no idea. I, actually, I still have no idea. So the, the biggest improvement that we can make in weather forecasting is not necessarily a more accurate forecast. It's actually changing the interface of how I, as a meteorologist, get you, the consumer, your weather. And on average, the average consumer checks the weather 115 times per month. I think you need to get on Facebook some more, actually. So take a look at this. On the left is the first satellite image ever taken of weather. And this is what we have today in the center. That's actually Hurricane Katrina in 05. Amazing improvement in the last 50 years. Similar improvements have been made in radar and computing. We have just great, great technology. However, how we get our weather information hasn't necessarily changed. This is Dr. Charles Hosler, 1957, on a TV show in Pennsylvania. And 50 years later, over half of people still get their weather information the same way. So the technology has come an amazing way. But, yeah, the mostly sunny guy, pretty good, right? The technology has come an amazing way, but the interface of how we get the weather really hasn't changed much in half a century. But wouldn't it be cool if you could get a quick alert so that you would not get caught on your bike in a rainstorm? Wouldn't it be cool if you got an email the night before your flight that said, the drive to the airport is going to take an extra 20 minutes tomorrow because of snow? Wouldn't it be cool if you got a little alert that said, make a right turn here, there's a tornado ahead two miles up the road? You laugh. However, here's the secret. This technology, it already exists, but it's only in the realm of big businesses who can pay for it, like BNSF Railroad, who actually got an alert from a meteorologist that said, hey, stop the train. This tornado crossing the tracks from the left, let it pass and then continue. This actually exists. However, the challenge is to bring this level of personalization profitably and sustainably to the mass consumer, to you guys. Well, you might say, all right, Joel, I can type in my zip code, I get the weather, it's fine. No, 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 no. We can do a lot, lot better than that. And we're going to start doing that. Actually, we already have. We've somehow levered, a little bit leveraged geo, location, and mobile. We're somehow leveraging social technology right now. And we're even integrating this to your activities. Who wants to go running in Boulder? We'll tell you what time. But I'll tell you what, that's just the beginning. All of those social buzzwords, geolocation, mobile, social, are going to fundamentally change the interface between what I know as a meteorologist and what gets communicated to you. Because honestly, like we all know, 28% chance of rain means nothing. So get ready, because I'm going to give you a 100% guaranteed forecast. Shocking, I know. That in a few years, the usefulness you get out of weather information will be far superior to anything you have today because of all these new improvements in consumer technology. Thank you.